the intersection and union set operations are faster if you have sorted representations of sets rather than unsorted representations. But you need to use a particular implementation to make them faster. So a set is represented by a linked list with unique elements ordered from least to greatest. And now our job is to intersect two sets, set 1, set 2, which both are represented in this way. And intersect creates a new linked list containing the elements that appear in both set 1 and set 2. If set 1 is empty or set 2 is empty, then the intersection is empty. Otherwise, both set 1 and set 2 have a first attribute, which we'll call e1 and e2. And here is how we make progress. If e1 and e2 are equal, then the intersection will contain that value. It doesn't matter whether we call it e1 or e2. We're going to return a linked list where e1 is the smallest element, and the rest of the elements are the intersection between the rest of set 1 and the rest of set 2. Now all of these values are larger than e1. So we know that their intersection will only contain larger values, and so we'll end up with a linked list in sorted order. If e1 is less than e2, then we know e1 is not in the intersection, because not only is it smaller than e2, it's smaller than everything in set 2, so it's not in set 2. But e2 might be in set 1. So we perform an intersection which still includes e2, which is the first element in set 2, but leaves out e1, which is the first element in set 1, by intersecting the rest of set 1 with set 2. And similar logic applies if e2 is less than e1. The order of growth is theta n, whereas before intersection took theta n squared. Instead of inspecting every pair of elements to see if they're equal, we're walking through both of the linked lists in order together, discarding one element at a time, at least with each incremental step. We can even define union in a similar way. So to define the union between set 1 and set 2, we'll first declare some base cases. If it's the case that set 1 is empty, then set 2 is the union of the elements in set 1 and set 2. Otherwise, if set 2 is empty, then the union of the elements is just set 1. Finally, we're in a case where both set 1 and set 2 have first elements. And so we need to consider whether e1 and e2 are equal, or if one is larger than the other. If e1 and e2 are equal, then the union will certainly include that value, but we don't want to include it twice. So we put e1 on the front, and then we take the e union of set1.rest and set2.rest. Otherwise, if e1 is less than e2, what should we do? We'll include e1, and then perform a union operation on the rest of set1, and set 2. And finally, if e2 is less than e1, then we're going to return a linked list containing e2 and a union over the rest of set 2 and set 1. Let's try it out. If I have 1, 3, 5, and I also have 2, 3, 4. Then the union of S and T should be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which is the same as the union of T and S. Again, this is a theta n operation.